Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to grow muscle while also minimizing the amount of body fat you put on. Now I can remember when I started lifting about 15 years ago, the advice was generally that in order to get big, you have to eat big. You gotta eat big to get big. So I can remember reading all kinds of articles where they would tell you to drink a gallon of milk each day on top of all the food that you were already eating or that you have to stuff yourself at every meal just in order to grow muscle. And this will work great if you want to get as big as possible. So for instance, if you're a shot putter, an American football player or even a bodybuilder that is enhanced. But the problem is you'll also put on a lot of body fat. So what I like to do instead and what pretty much all of my clients that want to put on some additional muscle prefer doing is a strategy called lean bulking where you look to optimize the ratio of muscle to fat gain. Now, truth be told, if you're purposely gaining weight in order to grow muscle, then you are going to put on some body fat as well, but we just want to make sure that we minimize this as much as possible. So if this is something that you're interested in, then there are three main things that you want to pay attention to, which I'd like to share with you in this video. So let's get started with number one, which is your training. So this is by far the most important aspect if you want to grow muscle. You can do everything else perfectly, but unless you're consistently resistance training, you're not going to build any muscle whatsoever. So you want to make sure that your training is set up in an intelligent way so that you're doing enough volume per muscle group per week at a high enough effort. I've made a whole video about this topic where I go in depth on how to set up your own training program. So I'll make sure that I link that in the video description down below. But in short, research shows that for most people, doing at least 10 sets per muscle group per week is required to maximize muscle growth. And then you want to make sure that each set is taken reasonably close to failure in order to make sure that they are effective. An efficient training program should consist of mainly compound exercises like squats, hip hinges, pushes and presses, and then some isolation exercises sprinkled on top, making sure that you're able to perform each exercise safely and with the correct technique. And in terms of reps, research does show that you can get similar muscle growth from doing low loads with high repetitions compared to doing high loads with low repetitions. But in my experience, both for my own training and coaching clients, staying within the six to 15 repetition range is the most efficient way of training if your goal is to build muscle. And there's also a study on resistance trained men that found that the group training with very light loads and high repetitions found this way of training a lot less enjoyable and more uncomfortable than training with more moderate training loads. So basically, you just want to find a plan that you enjoy and that you can stick to consistently and then focus on the principle of progressive overload, which means that if you're doing things correctly, then over time, you should be able to perform your exercises with more weight or more repetitions. Alongside your training program, you also want to set an appropriate calorie intake. So to gain muscle, typically you want to be in a calorie surplus. So in other words, you want to be consuming more energy per day than you are burning. You don't necessarily have to be in a calorie surplus, but gaining muscle is an anabolic process, which means something is being built and that requires energy. So if you are someone who is leaner or more experienced like myself, then over time, being in a calorie surplus is more and more important if you want to optimize muscle growth. Now, here's where it gets interesting. You might be thinking, okay, I understand that I need to be in a calorie surplus if I want to build muscle. So I guess I'll just start stuffing myself at every meal because if building muscle requires energy, then being in a larger surplus will surely just build more muscle, right? And to an extent that is true, you probably will build a little bit more muscle that way. However, putting on muscle is a very slow process. And once you overshoot the energy demand that is required for building muscle, pretty much all the excess calories will be stored as body fat. And even though you might build slightly more muscle, you'll end up looking a lot worse because you'll also put on a lot of body fat. And this was shown in a study with elite athletes where the group with the largest surplus didn't really put on more lean body mass than the group with the smaller surplus, but they ended up putting on five times the amount of body fat. And then you also have to diet a lot longer and a lot harder to get rid of that extra body fat. So you might end up losing the additional muscle that you put on anyway. So how do you find the correct calorie surplus? In my opinion, the best way to do so is to track your nutrition for at least two weeks, ideally through some kind of app like MyFitnessPal, and then also weigh yourself at least three times a week and then calculate your weekly average. And like I said in my last video, I'm a big proponent of weighing yourself daily just because that makes the data a lot more accurate and it also helps facilitate the habit of weighing yourself. And so for example, if you're consistently eating 3000 calories and your weight is staying roughly the same, that means you are to calorie maintenance. So you're burning as many calories as you're consuming. And then from there, you would just have to adjust your calories until you are a slight surplus 
and you are gaining weight at the appropriate rate. So for most people, this will probably be a one to 300 calorie surplus. Just keep in mind that building muscle requires energy and many individuals will experience an adaptive increase in energy expenditure. So this means they will automatically burn more calories once they eat more. And so you might have to increase your calories even more than you think just to reach that surplus. So going back to our example, if you are maintaining your weight at 3000 calories, you might have to go up to 3,500 just to put you in a slight surplus. I'd advise you to gain one to 2% of your body weight per month to make sure a big part of that is muscle and not body fat. And the more experienced you are, so the less muscle gain you can expect, the closer you should be sticking to the 1% per month or potentially even lower. And so for myself, I'm looking to gain around 0.8 kilograms per month at the moment, which works out at around 200 grams per week. And once I'm not able to gain weight at the appropriate rate anymore, I'll just adjust my calories upward by one to 200. Lastly, you want to be consuming enough of each macronutrient. So calories are delivered in form of so-called macronutrients. There are free macronutrients, protein, carbohydrates, and fats. And technically alcohol also contains calories, but I'm assuming if you've got serious fitness goals, then you're not going to be drinking regularly. So we'll ignore that one for now. Protein is mostly used for building and repairing tissues in our body. So it's the most important macronutrient for building muscle. And in order to grow muscle, we just need to make sure that we're providing the building blocks to do so. So in other words, we need to eat enough protein. And up to a certain point, diets that are higher in protein are more effective at growing muscle compared to diets that are lower in protein. And traditionally, bodybuilders have been known to eat massive amounts of protein for building muscle. But the current research on this topic seems to suggest that eating between 1.6 up to 2.2 grams of protein per kilo of body weight seems to be optimal for growing muscle and going any higher than that doesn't seem to have any additional benefit at least not in a calorie surplus so if you weigh 80 kilos like myself that would mean consuming anywhere between 130 up to 175 grams of protein and ideally splitting that between three to six meals making sure you have some protein before you train and some protein after your workout so the way i do it at the moment is i eat 170 grams of protein a day I have four meals and each meal contains about 30 to 50 grams of protein. As for fats and carbohydrates, I'd advise you to have at least half a gram of fat per kilogram of body weight, just for general health, and at least three to four grams of carbs per kilogram of body weight to fuel your training performance. Just keep in mind that these are minimum amounts, and as long as you're meeting these thresholds, it doesn't really matter if you're having more carbs or more fats, just base it on your personal preference. Personally, because I also train grappling and sometimes I train twice a day, it makes sense to have a higher carb intake. But if you're just someone who works out three to five times a week with a normal volume, then the amount of carbs and fats you're eating probably isn't that important. So in summary, you want to make sure that you're training hard enough to provide a sufficient stimulus for muscle growth, be in a slight calorie surplus that lets you gain about 1% of body weight per month, eat between 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein to provide the building blocks for muscle growth, while also making sure that you're consuming enough carbs for your training performance and fats for your general health. And then be patient and remember that this is a slow process and muscle growth does take time. So I'd recommend you do bulking phases that last at least four months before you can do a short fat loss phase to get rid of some of that excess body fat. And then all along, you should be constantly assessing if you're actually making progress or not, which is what I made my last video about so be sure to check that out as well. So that brings me to the end of this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.